Hey guys, Aris, Hardware Bastards. Today, EVGA Supernova 750G6. OEM Seasonic. Major differences with the older lines G2 and G3 were made by Superflower and G5 models by FSP. Efficiency Cybernetics Gold and 80 Plus Gold. Noise Cybernetics A minus 25 to 30 decibels average noise output. Fully modular capable design, compact dimensions, only 140 mm depth, $160 price in the US market, warranty. 10 years, so it is quite long, single 12 volt rail which can deliver the unit's full power alone and the minor rails can go up to 120 watts combined max power. Connectors, two EPS connectors on two cables, four PCI Express connectors on two cables, nine SATA connectors on three cables, four four pin Molex onto a single cable and a back adapter. We have long cables but only with 100 millimeters distance between all peripheral connectors and thankfully there are no in-cable caps. Internal design. EVGA asked Seasonic to make several changes to its popular Focus Gold platform for the G6 models. The most important change is the addition of an MCU microcontroller for controlling the fan speed profile. The same MCU also handles firmware overpower protection as EVGA calls it and also is responsible for over temperature protection. The cable connecting the MCU with the NTC thermistor located on the modular PCB looks awkward, but it will cost much for the complete design of the PCB, so this was the easiest way. Soldering quality is satisfactory. Filtering caps. The electrolytic caps on the secondary side are provided by Chemicon and Rubicon and are of good quality to outlive the 10-year warranty. Lots of polymer caps are also used by Chemicon and FP cap. Protection circuits. The main supervisor IC is a well-trained WT7527. RA and a well-trained MCU, the one I mentioned previously, supports it. The latter handles firmware OPP and OTP. The hardware OPP now is handled by the Champion CU6901 controller, which is the LLC resonant controller. The cooling fan is provided by Honghua, a manufacturer with high performance per price products. It uses a fluid dynamic bearing so it won't have any reliability issues unless exposed to high operating temperatures, meaning over 40 degrees Celsius, for prolonged periods. For tough conditions, double ball bearing fans are preferred over fluid dynamic ones but they are more expensive and they make more noise, especially under low RPMs. Protection features, the OCP and OPP triggering points are almost the same under hot and cold conditions, most likely because of the MCU, which is more accurate than analog ICs. Given the platform's high quality and tolerant components, there won't be any problems with the high OCP at 12V and the over 140% OPP triggering point. All other necessary protection features are present and work well. IR images. The hardest parts are the main transformer and the APFC primary and 12V heatsinks. Still, the operating temperatures are low given the operating conditions that I applied. The electrolytic caps are not close to notable heat sources unless you apply high load on the DC DC converters. Nevertheless, modern systems don't draw much power from the minor rails unless you have lots of RGB components installed. This is why I don't like RGB lighting. Performance. Load regulation. Let's start with that. If the voltage level at 12V wasn't so low at light loads for increased efficiency, load regulation on this rail will be almost perfect. Load regulation is pretty good in general. Ripple suppression is excellent on all rails without using extra in-cable caps. Transient response is good at 12V, 5V and 5SB but needs more work on 3.3V rail. 
Hold up time is long, much longer than the required, which is 17 milliseconds according to the ATX spec, and the powder case signal is accurate. Inner currents are low with both voltage inputs. EMI emissions are low in general. With the average EMI detector, there's only a spare exceeding the limit at 338 kHz, but everything is fine with the peak EMI detector. Average efficiency, high enough average efficiency score, but I cannot leave uncommented the amazing performance of the Cooler Master V750 Gold version 2 model. 5 USB average efficiency. This rail needs an efficiency boost to meet the competition. Average PF, the PFC converter needs tuning, especially with 230 volts input. Average noise output, this PSU is a bit less noisy than the Corsair RM750X. Uh, Cooler Masters offering now beats both. Overall performance, the overall performance is almost on par with the Corsair RM750X, I'm talking about the new 2021 model. And the Cooler Master V750 Gold version 2 clearly is the leader in this category. Bottom line, there are so many VGA PSU lines that even I lose count sometimes. Nonetheless, you should keep in mind the G6 line if you are after a high performance and a reliable power supply at a reasonable price. Notably, Competitors of the 750G6 model are the Corsair RM750X, the XPG Core Reactor with similar capacity, the Cooler Master V750 version 2 Gold, which achieves the highest overall performance of all units in this Vatage category. If you can still find an older EVGA 750G3 unit at a good price, you should also include it in your list. It won't have high efficiency at super light loads, but it offers high performance and especially in transient response, which is among the most important performance factors. Pros, full power at 47 degrees Celsius, high overall performance, good build quality, tight load regulation at 12 volt, efficient, long hold up time, low in rush currents, not noisy at normal operating conditions, fully modular, load of con loads of connectors, compatible with the alternative sleep mode, compact emissions and the 10 year warranty. Cons, increased noise under stressful conditions, not so efficient 5 USB rail, APFC converter needs tuning for higher PF readings and small distance between peripheral connectors. Another PSU review has finished, if you have any questions, leave it on the comment section and I will try to reply to all comments and of course subscribe to our channel and see you in one of our next videos bye bye